All righty. Hello there, everybody. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are in the world. As I can see already from the chat, there is people from all over the place, which is great to see. We've got California, Canada, so Grand Cayman, Devon, South Wales, all over the place. So uh, thank you yet again for joining me for another week of these uh, live broadcasts with another guest. Uh, Krishna Gar, this, uh, this particular week, you're going to find this really interesting. I'm looking to really forward to uh, diving into Krishna's uh, kind of photography, his background, and that kind of stuff. I've got my notes, always got my notes, but I've got my pen because I think when we're chatting, there's going to be a few more things that are going to come up. So I'm really looking forward to that. But as usual, let's just get some admin out the way, first of all, before I bring the main man in. The first thing to let you know about, and I am genuinely, to coin a phrase, chuffed to bits. The uh, Lightroom Virtual Summit is returning in 2024. I've already sent this out on social media and those of you who get my twice monthly newsletter, you'll have got this already. But it's coming out. It's, it's very soon, May the 20th to 24th. Here's the link to register for it. Get your free pass. I say this every time that there's a virtual summit. Get your free pass because if you use it, then great. If you don't, you've lost nothing. So just register for your free pass. Uh, there's going to be, was it, there's 15 instructors, 45 classes, 30 plus hours worth of Lightroom and some Photoshop content as well. So definitely register for that. The other thing to let you know about was I've done a blog post today covering these pictures here, which you probably remember if you tuned in last week, I showed these pictures here that uh, I took of my friend Steve Healy, who's in the chat. I've seen him there. And also I was uh, at the same time I was with my friends Ian Munro and Anthony Crothers who I believe are also in the chat as well. But what I've actually done is I've actually written a blog post. If I just show you this over here, I only published it about sort of maybe an hour or so ago, but there's a blog post I've put together here. It's quite lengthy, but it goes through ev absolutely everything. No stone unturned about how I did these particular portraits. Even sort of listing here the actual steps in the retouching in both Photoshop and Lightroom. And I've even put in a video right at the end here that's not on my YouTube channel. You'll only see that video here where I go through a particular technique uh, that I did. I had to use on Steve because on one of the portraits we did where he was sitting down, I thought at some point he kind of like, it's just the way he was sat with the stool and the jacket. It made him look squashed up. So we kind of took pictures of him also standing, which I loved but I preferred the, the expression on the seated ones. So I want to show you what I did. It's not a head swap, in case those of you are trying to second guess it. It's not a head swap. It's a technique I used to use when I used to photograph physiques quite a lot. And it's a technique that I used to use to make them just look a little bit bigger, but you wouldn't know I'd done it. It's just done the reverse on Steve to make him look not so squashed. So that's that one there. The other thing as well was just to let you know, again, that there's that link for that Royal Photographic Society workshop that I'm doing on the 28th of this month. I know a few people have registered already. It is for a mammoth cost, I think, of £12.50. But it is mainly for those folks who are in the UK, because I think it's over in uh, Ringwood near New Forest. So that's the admin, right? That's that done. Let's now get the main man in. But before we do, it's a bit of a ritual now. I've put together a bit of a slideshow, some of his images that uh, Chris sent over to me of his kind of like, it's very different work. And that's what I love about what Chris is does. Chris is following his own path. He's found the genre that he loves and he's out there photographing. He's got his own style and retouching. And I want to really dive into all this. So there's obviously some very, he calls it alternative fashion. That's the kind of work that he does. So we're going to look at that now. I tried to choose some appropriate music. He hasn't seen this yet, so I'm hoping he approves of this. But I'll play this now. It's about a minute and 15, six, a minute and 15 seconds long. Then we'll get the main man in. So this is Krish's promo.
cool. I hope he liked that. I hope he liked the music. We'll soon find out. There was a little bopping going on. I noticed in the green room, there's a little camera I can see, the cyber I can see him in his room. So he was bopping about a bit. But let's just bring the main man in. Let's hope he can hear me. So, Chris, please tell me you can hear me. Loud and clear, Glenn. And uh, hopefully you can hear me as well. <laughs> I can, yeah. I'll just bring your levels down just a touch. There we go. But there you go. There's your uh, details. Chris just popping up on the screen just there. I'll repeat those later on. But, Chris, first of all, I mean, we've been mates for a, a good long while now. I don't know how long it is. But uh, even so, thank you so much for doing this because I know this is like a you know, busy day. And now you've had a family time. And now you're doing this for us before we've got a busy week ahead. So thank you so much, mate. My pleasure, mate. My pleasure. Thank you so much for having me on, Paul. I was, uh, I, I'm still pinching myself, like, you know, am, am I worthy? Am I worthy? We'll find out the absolutely, next hour. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Listen, I, the thing about this this platform, what I'm liking to do on these weekly lives is, you know, there's 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 lots of people out there we know that push themselves. They're incredibly well known. They're the kind of easy easy people to get on, really. Sure. But there is, like I said this when I first started them. There is so much talent out there that doesn't shout and scream about it and is kind of behind closed doors and just getting on and doing it. And I kind of put you in that bracket. Do you know what I mean? Because there'll be people who know you, there'll be people who don't. But there's an incredible sure. portfolio of work there that I just think more people need to know about. And that's hence why you're here tonight. All right. So there you I go. I appreciate you, my but, friend. I appreciate you. <laughs> <laughs> but as, uh, as I do to sort of help us to get into a bit of a groove, get us kind of lubricated, if you like. Chris, just sure. give us a bit of a... Um, Give us a bit of a, a potted history as to how we've come to the point now where we have Krishna Nagar, who's the photographer. Where did that all start? Well, it's going to be the, the old cliches, I suppose. Um, so I'm a Bristol boy originally, uh, moved, moved to Wales uh, just after my, my fine art degree, uh, as it were. Or, or I did my fine art degree, sorry, in, in Wales, Cardiff. Um, and... Photography has always kind of been, let's say, the the, the byproduct. So it was always a secondary. Um, I like to, well, the younger Chris would have liked to have thought of himself as a bit of a painter, uh, muralism, all of that sort of thing. Mm. Um, and I, I guess it really came to the fold shortly after I graduated, to be honest with you, as a, let's call it a quicker means of expression, um, if you will. Yeah. Um, yeah, you yeah. Know, I, I don't know, even the, you know, even the people watching how much you know about, you know, the sort of fine art and the fine art world, as it were, difficult cookie to crack, as it were, <laughs> if, uh, you know, you got it, you got to know, you really got to know the right people, uh, you know, um, yeah, yeah. and, uh, and yeah, it was just, it was, and, you know, around the time, um, I, you know, I'd met my, my, uh, my better half, I should call her, I suppose, uh, at university. Um, we just had uh, Zach, my my eldest boy as well, around that time, so sort of, you know, 20, 21, 22. Um, so it was all a little bit 100 miles an hour. And, I, you know, I, at the time I was working in in Marks and Spencers, of all things, living the, living the dream. And <laughs> a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of what you'll see tonight uh, is is um, massively based on even even in terms of my own appearance. So you've seen the, the tattoos and the piercings and all of that, yeah, yeah, yeah. all of those sorts of things. You know, I'm I'm pretty covered. This is all a conscious decision to make sure that I never have to go back to a corporate environment ever again. <laughs> <laughs> it's, okay, it's, uh, all right, that makes sense. But yeah, well, that's extreme way, but there you go. If it works, yeah. then fine, absolutely fine, <laughs> yeah. absolutely, absolutely. But that's right. that's me, mate. In a, in a nutshell. Sure. Yeah. Cool. Well, I, ne I never knew the Bristol. I never knew the Bristol yeah. thing. There you go. So, okay. Okay. so you move from Bristol and you, you've picked up the Welsh accent. They're pretty damn good there, uh, actually. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm <laughs> just thinking about it now. I think I've, I've been here for about 16 years or so. So uh, I've got the twang. Yeah. I've got the Kamal and twang. You definitely <laughs> have, mate. You definitely have. You definitely have. All right. Well, while you were talking there, there was the, there was a few images that I was kind of like popping up, and there has been some. I don't know if you saw us. I was putting some um, posts up as well there. Some people have already commented when they saw the slideshow. You know, we've got comments here from JJ saying uh, amazing images. Brian's put amazing work there, Chris. Gary Nichols, who's a former guest, put bloody superb. Anthony, you know, so, and there's a guy here called Simon Russell says an incredibly yeah, talented chap uh, indeed. So that's, that's my I, was, guy, Simon. Yeah. <laughs> I was, I was putting up loads of your, your images there, and there's obviously more that I'm going to go through as we, as we sure. go through this, uh, this chat. Mm -hmm. But one thing about your images, it, it's a very, and I tried to try to explain this before we uh, kicked off, was you've you've certainly picked a genre. Do you know what I mean? A very distinctive mm -hmm. genre that is clearly something that you 
you know, you relish. This This is definitely your thing. Do you know what I mean? Sure. I want to kind yeah. of know really, because I, I am absolutely intrigued by it, where, you know, did you first of all start out photographing the regular stuff? Do you know what I mean? We, I spoke to yeah. Kevin Mullins last week and wedding photographer. He said that he did start out doing all the other stuff and eventually weddings was his thing. Yeah. Is that the same with you when it comes to this alternative fashion that you you call it? Um, did you did you you know go straight into that, or were you yeah. doing the traditional yeah. stuff beforehand? Yeah. Um, it's it's a it's a mix of everything. I mean, I, I kind of I landed on that niche of 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 people quite quite quickly, um, and I, I would say you know even even before um, I picked up I picked up a camera properly really um so uh, i would say that people have always been um the biggest interest uh, within within what i what i like to shoot and and even in the artwork that was that was consumed at the time um some of my favorite paintings uh feature human characters uh etc so um yeah it, it was a, it was a very um it was a very um consistent thing within within the work that i used to do um yeah. thank goodness i didn't send you any of that stuff mate because it's um yeah, it's, <laughs> a, it's called a, a learning curve which i've i've now hopefully um you know <laughs> uh, sort of mastered in one way or another but but yeah you know I, I did a bit of still life and things you know sort of G, you know, gcse photography uh yeah, photographing yeah. cactuses and like you know classic sort of close-up uh, macro work on a uh you know on a cello as it were trying to be trying to be edgy as it as it were you know but as you it, can it, as you much know. as you can be with a cello uh, yeah 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 absolutely absolutely <laughs> you know but um but hey listen i i thought i was i thought i was uh i was i was doing the I was doing the right thing you know at the at the time but yeah, yeah. um it's 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 all about you know for, for me it's all about well, yeah as i say i'm pretty covered in covered in ink etc I'm in that type of environment. I think that was the that was where you know start hanging around tattoo studios and uh, you know um, you know alter, alternative people going out drinking in rock bars and things like that. You know during university, mm -hmm. etc. I think all of those things kind of subconsciously baked themselves into uh, into my head. The uh, the fire breathers. <laughs> Sorry, I chuckle at that image every time because uh, I can still feel the heat <laughs> off of that thing, as it were. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, it's. It, it, I I think I, I think there was whether it was happening uh, consciously or subconsciously that, that people was always kind of going to be the uh, was always kind of going to be the end result if you will. So okay, so obviously you know you you explain there that you you know you're also somebody who's got a lot of ink you know on your arms and all that kind of stuff. So are we saying there that when it comes to photographing the kind of people that you do photograph? That are very distinctive. I'm kind of, I'm kind of imagining because it's, it's not my. World. I've got one tattoo. You know, I mean, I, you know, um, it's not, it's not the world that I'm in. So, would I be right in saying that it is a very close knit kind of community? And for anybody on the outside trying to get in, it wouldn't be quite so easy. Is that right? Is that why you think you've been able to get into that kind of world? Potentially, uh, potentially. I mean, yeah, the, those those guys is um, as you say intimidating. I don't, I don't think you know. As, you know, who, who almost who hasn't no. got a tattoo now? Is yeah, do, you know, yeah. do you know what yeah. I mean? But may, maybe when I started, there was still a little bit more of a stigma around um, heavily tattooed people. I yeah. guess, but they are the they're the loveliest people that you'll that you'll ever meet. You know, in in every walk of life, there's a, there's a couple of wrong ones obviously but um on you know in general loveliest people that you'll ever meet so i don't i don't think listen if you're if you're somebody that's looking to get into this world right now i don't think there's i don't really think that there's anything stopping you you know it's it's just about i think more so having the confidence to approach somebody that yeah, looks yeah, like yeah. that and then once you've broken through that barrier actually the, i mean the, the, the reason i asked that the reason I ask you that, Chris, is because certainly speaking about my own experience when it came to when I, when I kind of first started out, as I mentioned, I was I was very much into photographing physiques. And that was it was an easy thing for me to do because I had that kind of, you know, gym life and you knew people who'd competed. I competed and it was kind of it was very easy to get into because you could you know, you just kind of you knew the what you knew the language, basically. Yeah. And also, sure. you know, thinking back to it, you know, a few weeks ago now, we had Gary Nichols, who was um, 
who was one of the guests. Now, Gary's not involved initially, it wasn't anyway, with that kind of, I'll say steampunk, because that's what people would know it as, but I know it's more than that. But sure. st st Gary had to get like an inner, you know what I mean? He, he must somehow, I don't know, I can't remember how he told me now, but he got managed to photograph one person or a group of people from that particular, I'm going to say, I'll say world, but that was his inner. So is that yeah. is that kind of thing how it happened for you? There was a, p a particular person that you met, you photographed, and then that was the the door to photographing more. Yeah, yeah, I would I would say so. I think it was uh, around the time that I was having sort of the top the top half of my sleeve done. Um, I think it was a, a studio called the Needle Asylum in Cardiff, and my uh, my artist Andy there. I I took my I had a an A one program camera with me, and I took uh, about twenty four shots out of thirty six, just kind of clicking away. There was only one. There was only one that that printed any <laughs> any good. It's a bit it's a bit <laughs> difficult when your arm's there and you're trying. But I was I was constantly sort of scanning. The, the studio I, I sat there in a chair getting and um, get my arm needled up for for about uh, two two and a half three hours you know so I'm, I'm there yeah. clicking away and I'm, I'm sort of taking those shots but um that might no I, I remember scanning that negative when Instagram or when I first got on to Instagram which was I'm gonna say 2014 2015 I, I really started posting to the platform and i think it was a couple of years old by then but yeah. um that's that that image <laughs> that one solitary image um which isn't on there now because it, it's not you know it's not my not my best work as it were but that that probably opened the door certainly to you know you, you send your links off to people you know would would be models um people that you're interested in working with yeah. and I, I guess having that type of photograph kind of albeit that it, it you know it wasn't it wasn't really very good <laughs> and they kind of opened that open that door because at least you've got something to show somebody uh else yeah. that you're trying to work with totally yeah and they can and and then it's all about you know do, do they do, do they buy into the vision <laughs> you know that's the that's the biggest thing um yeah sat here Sat here now in 2024, um, almost blessed. I, I can I can I can speak to uh, just about anybody from that community, and um, and next week I could I, I could probably have a have a shoot booked in with them, um, just based off the off the body of work that you that you see on my on my socials, for example. Cool. Well, I know obviously we we obviously chatted during the week because I wanted to make sure that because I've got so many questions about this, because what you do is very, very different to what I do. And I'm always intrigued to see what drives people to go a particular way and what, what influences a certain style and what have you. But I know one of the things we did was we, we kind of went through some of the images that you'd sent over and said, look, out of these images here, are there, are there any in particular that you think, yeah, I'd quite like to talk about that one and that person and what have you. So... How about we bring those up now? I'll bring a, a couple of those. And then just kind of, because I have no idea let's what go. it was that you wanted to say about them. But let's just bring up sure. uh, this lady here. Because I think this lady was quite was she pivotal in what you do. Is that right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Rosie. So um, so this is this is uh, Rosie goes by the alias of Rosie Oklahoma Jenkins. If uh, if you're on social media, please do uh, do check her out. Check out her portfolio as well. But um, yeah, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to say some, somebody that um, that I, I think very, very highly of um, outside of, you know, um, a, a sort of a, a, a professional uh, relationship. She's somebody that's um, I could pick up the phone now and and yeah. she'll be here in an hour you know that she's yeah. absolutely that that person and um when i was when i was coming up um she was she was very very pivotal in in sort of let's say cementing the portfolio uh to what you see today because um she's she's just such such a giving person in in, in that respect you know um mm. she she didn't mind when i when i made mistakes and uh you know on things like uh skin softening and 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 the yeah the, yeah yeah edited so whenever i take a photograph of rosie it's almost like 
I, I wouldn't do her the disservice of ever calling them test shots because because they're not. But uh, I I've got a little bit more leeway with those images to really uh, really polish those up. And then you see a couple of a couple of comments coming up there now that, that yeah, people yeah, are enjoying yeah. the way that I like these, as it were. Um, listen, there's no that is that is nothing but the um, but the, the the mantra of consistency. That's the one big thing that I always say. It's the mantra of consistency. I, if there's one thing that I was going to do, it was it was nail down that that sort of paramount lighting. In fact, I, I'm I'm doing it now. Check check this out. So, they are, there's a nice loop light on me now. Whoop, wrong person. Oh, no, like, no worries. No, no, no Wait, fine. There we so, go. Got a, got a light directly above me now, just because yeah. I love the I love the sort of the cinematic vibe, as it were. But that's a loop. If I turn that way, Rembrandt. Uh, if I yeah, bring my yeah. head under here. There we go. Almost, almost, almost. Just shift that shadow over there. We're almost got a paramount or a butterfly. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but you know, I'm always I'm always consciously consciously thinking about uh, thing, things of that nature. And and Rosie is a, a phenomenal human being, um, and and somebody that um, that that will literally sit there until I get until I get it right. It's <laughs> always always good to have those people that you know that are more than happy to come in and kind of help you out practicing. Absolutely it is. In fact, I think the image that you sent over, let's have a look here. So this is the one that I brought up first of all. And I think sure. obviously you're talking about the lighting. There we go. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that that is it. That's all that's being used to light Rosie there. It's literally it, and I and I did this. Uh, so this particular image actually was taken at, um, at a camera club session, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so we we you know I, I got in there. It was a little bit running gun um, because I didn't know the type of environment that we were walking into. So uh, incidentally, that's a I think that's a Glyn Dewis backdrop as well. By the way, well you know I, I, I kind of had a feeling. I had a feeling. I thought to... that's looking pretty sharp. That is. That's got to be my backdrop. Yeah. <laughs> Love that, but no, this is it, it, and and the X drop. You know, you get in there, bump, 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 set it all up, ready to go. I like grey um, as uh, you know. That's always my first choice, go to sort of background, uh, just because if I need to, if I need to make it black, I can do that. Got the grey, can make it white if we if we get enough light on there. So, um, very very versatile backdrops. Those are those are um, massive parts of my arsenal. But yeah. that particular, but that particular image, as you can see there, there's no, um, there's you know, there's 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 no frills with uh, with that one light. It's a lantern style modifier. A little bit of a contradiction, to be honest with you, because um, that thing flo just froze light absolutely everywhere. So everything I've learned, yeah, I've never used one it's it's difficult to control. I mean, I would have I would have actually really have liked a, a couple of V flats, black V yeah. flat there, just to just to stop some of that light bouncing around uh, all, all over the place. Maybe control it a little bit more. But I'm really happy with the with the way that that, that image came out. Uh, I think she looks spectacular, um, which is a given. But that you know, she really suits that that sort of top down paramount yeah. sort of lighting. Um, I think the only time I've ever seen that kind of lantern light um, ever being used really was, I mean, Joey Lawrence, Joey L. You know, a lot of the portraits that he would do, he would have obviously the pro photo. I don't think it was like a material one. It was, it seemed like more of a solid dome that he was using. Um, and yeah. Great light, but I've never I've never used one. But I can see what you mean there about having to, you know, it literally is. It's like having a ceiling light. Let's face it, isn't it? So you have to really control it with V flats and all that kind of stuff as well. Absolutely, absolutely. So is that is that your well, you kind of preferred lighting then? Is that is that something that you like to do because it is so versatile? The way you were shifting about in the room there to say, look, I can go here, I can get that pattern, I can go here, get that yeah, pattern. For sure, it's all. Some, sometimes it's always about finding the right tools to deliver um, the most seamless uh, sort of workshop, if if you will. You know, and that since that modifier uh, has sort of come onto the market, uh, I I think it, it you know ninety percent of the time that travels with me to most uh, workshops or educational sort of things that that I tend to do. Um, when I'm back in my studio, however, uh, it's it's conventional. Softbox, 
uh, two stops of diffusion and a, and a, and a grid <laughs> nine times out yeah. of ten, to be honest with you. So um, there's there's elements of there's elements of control because ultimately, I mean, that, that's the that's one of the biggest things that you learn as a studio photographer um, is that you become a little bit of a control freak. <laughs> that's it, that's it. Yeah, yeah. You know, unfortunately, yeah. that comes part and parcel uh, of of the you know of the medium, if you will. You know, so yeah, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely. Cool. All right. Well, listen, obviously, that's the first one. That's Rosie, you say. That's the uh, Rosie. Yes. Now, th there is one that's not on the list to sort of say, oh, this is what you want to go through. But I'm going to be selfish here because this is out of all the images you sent through. Don't get me wrong. I love them. But this one in particular, I was I was really drawn to. I don't know why. Maybe I'll, maybe somebody else will feel the same as me. But straight away, it kind of made me feel like uh, or think about Amy Winehouse. That kind of yeah. that kind of feel to it. It could it could easily be an Amy Winehouse image for a, a, an album cover, mm -hmm. something like that. But that image there, Chris, is that? Tell us a bit about that one. Um, you know, who is it? Sure. How it was lit, and and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Yeah, and Lee Churchill there. Good point, actually. Lee, Lee's just put. She has got that kind of look of Lady Gaga about her as well. Yeah. So that. yeah, Appreciate I can I can that. see that. Yeah. Um, Definitely. In fact, and, there you go. Spelt it correctly now. There we go. <laughs> so tell, tell <laughs> us a bit about that one, then, Chris. Uh, yeah. So um, so this one again. So this was um, taken in 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 my studio um, when I had when I had a, a you know a, a fair bit of time. In fact, this is probably from my first ever shoot with uh, the young lady in the image, which is Emmy, uh, who is um, she's just the most fantastic. Uh, cosplayer if you will um mm -hmm. she makes some real real out there so you know um uh, outfits and costumes and stuff uh alien and predator and all that sort of thing so if you've got a minute definitely definitely do check out her work oh, as well, well but, definitely, yeah. um that's actually a wig that she's wearing so we did about five or six different sets on this particular on this particular shoot um we were doing it for a publication or in fact I, I think i think each set got published in a different magazine which was absolutely amazing because um, that yeah. was that was one of those where we kind of went into the following month with about five publications under our belt which was um, which was awesome but uh this particular image i think made the front cover of our tells magazine um who i believe are they're an online and a cloud-based magazine um, right. very predominant on social media etc but they they love they love this they absolutely love this so, um it got the it got the coverage that it deserved as well let's mm. let's put it that way but um cracking again, shot. nothing nothing all too fancy going on with that really that is a that's a a, a nice big 105 centimeter uh raja stoff box by photix and mm. uh double double diffused this is what i love about my studio i i, I can elevate the light to a to you know almost whatever height that i want you know i got i got almost 15 meters to play with in terms of height and right. to be able to throw a throw a modifier of that size up for a single lit subject is is absolutely it's it's paramount for <laughs> for what i shoot um and and that's that's all it is, and then and then just a just a black. We we took a couple of couple of test shots. Um, it looked it looked great as it was, but I, I decided actually I'm going to black the background out completely. So we added a grid to it. There's a couple of V flats on either side there, just to make sure that we haven't got any spillover or reflection of yeah. light coming in. And 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 we're cooking. You know, this was this was the this was the result. I knew probably within two frames, having put the grid on there, that we'd that we that we got it you know and uh, at the end of a, a pretty long shoot you know it and was I, a good it was I'm, a good solid end <laughs> good stuff it's a great it's really is a great result it's uh i mean uh david palermo's put here he put uh amy winehouse yeah so we're definitely on the same same uh track there then beautiful image love the smoke now you know me having a history of Photoshop, we are talking. That was a real so there was smoke there. There was no Photoshop brushes going on there, was there? It was. It was absolutely. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I just sort of said to her, you know, just let's let's finish. You know, we got we got the leather and and you got the you know the sort of the denim shorts and all that sort of thing. So, do you know yeah. what? Do you know what we're missing is um, just have a fag, just have a fag. Don't po don't pose around. Just enjoy. I just want to capture you enjoying that cigarette and uh and then we can and then once you finish that we can pack up and go and she sort of just lit it up and i took a few frames you know she was sat there she was sort of talking to me and then she just sort of glanced down to to move the wig uh out of her eye and perfect bang, yeah. one two got it yeah nailed it brilliant stuff <laughs> 
All right, let's um I love it. I really love that image. But let's just kind of cover all the bases, right? Because I know that we you know, photographers, we all like to know about kit. You've mentioned light in there that you're using was Photix. That's obviously your kind of go-to for lights. What sure. what are we when we're talking about um cameras, what camera are you using? And do you find as well that despite having probably access to all manner of different lenses, do you tend to find there is a go-to lens that you use for your photography as well? Absolutely, yeah. So I'm a, I'm a uh, obviously being a portrait photographer, the classic 50 millimeter um, is always a uh, a mainstay in my kit bag. Uh, I love the look that 85 mil gives me. Um, 105 as well. The, the Sigma 105 yeah. f 1.4, the the beast, as it were, is one of my one of my favourite lenses without a shadow of a doubt. Um, when I'm in studio, 135 actually is a is a is a very fulfilling focal length as well, definitely. Yeah. Um, but I'm definitely I'm definitely a primes guy. I, th- I, I will put that out there straight away. I'm a prime lens shooter. But um, most of these images that you'll see that, that you'll see during this presentation are, are actually they're all they're all classic 50 mil, be that a 1.8 or a or a 1.4. Um, this is the bit where all the viewers go straight down i am a canon shooter <laughs> for my sins but i suppose hey, somebody's listen, got listen, to do whoa, it whoa, right? whoa, hold on a second <laughs> i would be so incredibly tempted after speaking to scott de Usa, a couple of, you know when he mentioned yeah. about that eye tra- in the in the r3 that yeah. eye tracking auto yeah. what the mm-hmm. so yeah. you know hey mate canon yeah, yeah bring it on it's it, it's just I, you know i i love the um so i'm using it just just to answer a previous question i'm using an r6 mark ii at the moment uh most of those images that you will see uh they were shot with the original uh eos r uh and then anything later like the fire breather and things i i, I took with uh an r6 uh, sorry an r6 sorry a, a 6d mark one and that was uh that was right. actually my first full frame camera as well you know so um so a lot of um a lot of sentimental memories attached to that but i've always, I've always kind of been a canon guy um i tried fuji for around about nine months uh and, and i love and i loved it listen i i loved it but um uh something caught something just calls you back doesn't it to, yeah, you know, yeah, I, I, it i'm one of those yeah. something just kind of calls me back and canon had gone mirrorless around the time i think it was an xt3 I was using an xt3 for about nine months really right. really love the camera love the ergonomics etc but yeah there's you know there, there's just something about the i and and i always say this um i'm somebody obviously the, the, these images hopefully you're getting that that feel of cinema cinema it's very cinematic uh, mm. very dramatic in that respect uh the the flatness of canon's file and uh their vast improvement in dynamic range and push right. and pull ability on those files i think is um uh, has come on leaps and bounds and that that really gives you a very solid platform to implement your own color science onto your files and and ultimately you know um I'm the result you. is is what you see in front of you today i'm, I'm you know? totally with you i am kind of uh i'm not i'm i mean you know you know you know my, we've had plenty of talks about kit in the past um, sure. And I'm not kind of loyal to a brand because they're going to put money in my pocket. It's got to be fit for purpose. And I've, I remember when, when I got to have a go with that R5 for a week or so, the Canon R5. Holy moly, yeah. incredible, absolutely. Because yeah. we did a did a portrait of you during the day Absolutely, when yeah. I first yeah. got my hand within minutes of having it and we're taking it was yeah, yeah. really really good bit of kit um Krish, I want to ask you because I know there are there's other images other images we've put aside that I want to go of through course, but yeah. one of the things I'm, sure. I'm always intrigued about mate because this is something that I have spoken about a lot in the past and that's to do with style so mm-hmm. we know your chosen field of what you want to do do you know what I mean you're, you're mm-hmm. within that world and you've made lots of friends within it now so that they're comfortable for you to be the one who takes their pictures but when it comes to the the i guess yeah the lighting style being one and also mm-hmm. the editing style you know sure. I'll, I'll ask you first where does that come from and do, do you if you really think about it is it something that you're kind of thinking actually yeah it probably comes from that because I, i'm a big believer in our style it's it's obviously very um it's unique to ourselves, but there are sort of outside forces in a way that can influence it. And I'm a, and I'm a big believer that our, our life, our upbringing and all that kind of stuff can ultimately impact our, our outlook and our, our style that we do in photography. Now, sure. 
in the politest possible way, and I mean this, your images are dark and there's a mood to them, dark and moody. Not saying they're moody, I'm saying there's a mood. Yeah, sure. yeah. Do you think that there's anything about your life, your upbringing, any experiences that has kind of impacted that? Massively so. So uh, I'm a huge Marvel fan, <laughs> which hopefully comes across in some of the um, in some of the images there. But uh, and, I, and I've collected uh, comic books and things of that nature, or, or you know, from from a very very young age. Um, but I can I can remember the point in which it turned, and the, and this is uh, I'm glad you put that image up there actually, because this is probably the finest example of that. Uh, I can remember being in a comic book store in Bristol. And I can remember picking up a DC comic book for the for the first time ever. Right, so I was I was right. a Marvel guy. Right, that's the side of, that's the side yeah, my yeah. bread was buttered with. That shadow of that, I picked up this DC comic book, and I instantly fell in love with it, just because of as you say how dark the the actual imagery was. Yeah. You know, Batman in a completely different light. <laughs> you know, it, it was it was mad, and the the quality of the illustration as well. You know, some some Marvel comics in terms of the illustration, etc., can be a little bit. Uh, you know, and that's and that's the artist in me kind of kind of talking there. They're a little bit, you know, meh. Um, <laughs> but but DC was just like it, it was mad, and then and then I suppose that the the next sort of time that I'd um, that I'd really thought about it was. Uh, I saw a Francesco Goya um, illustration in the flesh. I think it was in Italy at the Guggenheim Museum. Um, right. And that thing just blew my socks off. Absolutely amazing. It was, it, you know, ink. Um, but, whoa, yeah, I can remember seeing that. And, and, it, and, then, it's, and then it's almost like, you know, you, you think years later, hang on a minute, how do I recreate that? with mm. with this tool you know yeah, with this yeah, yeah. instrument you know i got megapixels here how do, how do i light it so that it looks like a like a goya uh you know illustration or painting or how do i um how, how do i how do i like this so that it looks like a you know a rembrandt painting um or a diego rivera or an orozco or a sequiros you know um, all, all of these masters of of, of, of painting and, and narrative and being able to uh, draw your attention to the points they want to draw the attention yeah, to. Yeah. And uh, when you when you study art, you know a lot a lot of people look at you know what what the for example, uh, Monk, the the scream. You know, hopefully we've we've all seen seen that yeah. painting. It's a very vi it's a very vibrant painting. Um, and while I love the subject matter and I love the painting and, and and all of those sorts of things, there's not there's just not enough mystery in it for me. Um, when I look at the work of somebody like uh, Geiger, for example, right, the stuff mm. that he did, which later went on in uh, and was produced in the Alien films, for example, it wasn't so much the 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 image of the stuff that you could see in there that was that was illuminated you know the figures of of these aliens that were sort of kind of like in, intertwined and it was all very mechanical and, and machine orientated but there was always something going on in the shadows you know right. that that space behind me there now that's that's interesting to me you know if i can capture that space in a composition that's interesting to me. There, there's nothing you know, there, there's nothing behind there other than my bookshelf and my bed <laughs> but if you're looking at that image, it's that interpretation of it, isn't it? And mm -hmm. that's what's always sucked me into that that sort of darker, that darker sort of art there, because it, it and it's not always about the the predominant figure in the image. It's about maybe what's going on behind them. What's in that little bit of mystery? That's where my mind can kind of, you know, create its own narratives. And I guess that's why yeah, that's yeah. why I love I love art and I, I love photography in that respect. Interesting. You know? so, All right. Well, I'm learning a lot tonight about you, and I. So, so we've got Bristol, Marks and Spencers into comics. I <laughs> never knew that. Never knew that. All right. Well, well, let's move on then. Now that you've mentioned that, then let's have a look at these other ones here. So, um, this is the other images that you kind of mentioned about. There's certainly the, the the person in them anyway. So, we've got that image there. We've got um, that image. Is it that image there? No, 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 not that one. We've got that, that one. one. And we've got this one just uh, here as well. There we go. There we go. 
Yeah. Cool. And I know there's another one. I think it's this one. There we go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, a couple of couple of Nancy and uh one of Sierra or Storm as uh, as she goes by. So we'll, we'll start with we'll start with Nancy. Um just because this is a this is a, a an an individual that um I, I thought that I would never get to photograph. Um so she's as as far as I as far as I know she's a Cardiff girl. Um, I I met her a few times uh, whilst I out on the lash with the boys during my uni days <laughs> in uh, metros in Cardiff. So uh, she's quite a predominant figure on the on the on the tattoo scene there. But um, she was an internationally published model as well. You know the the unattainable one as as it were, right. uh, or as I found out because it, you know the the level of of work that she was producing um you know she was on the on the, on the forefront front covers etc of every major magazine um that was to do with tattoos lifestyles you know alternative culture etc so um yeah I, I i didn't i didn't catch her sort of when when she was was within was within that sort of prime if you will you know mm -hmm. um but as as fate would have it, have it, I suppose it was meant to be. Um, Nancy was uh, about to sort of announce her retirement, let's say, from the modelling game completely. Um, about a year and a half ago now, I think those shots were taken. Um, but yeah, she basically just said, "Look, I'm 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 hanging up my boots, uh, Chris. We never got to work together." uh shall i make the trip to Carmarthen and maybe we should maybe we should get that wow get get those images in your portfolio you know um and i i was just you know that that phone call happened on a on a sunday afternoon not too dissimilar to this in the evening and by the <laughs> tuesday afternoon we had we'd gotten about four or five sets together uh she jetted off to australia which i believe is where she now resides and wow. uh, and 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 I and again that was another another scenario. As soon as I put those images out, the publications or the requests for publications just came flooding in, just simply because of who you know who she was. Absolutely phenomenal, you know. Absolutely so phenomenal. so all of these images um, here then that I've been bringing up, this mm -hmm. one, uh, this one, and that also uh, this one, these are all on the same yeah. shoot on that Tuesday. They're, oh, they're, right. So this is um, this is actually Storm Pass. So this is a, a, a different model. Uh, oh, wow. The one okay. on the screen at the moment. Okay. Okay. So we've got um, that one then, and this one. That's so the, these two. were on the same yeah. shoot, right? Indeed. Indeed. Yeah. Absolutely. Blimey! So don't did, ever don't ever, don't ever ask me to go to court as a witness, will you? Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, but uh, but incidentally, there's there's a there's a link or a t or a tie there as well because if I hadn't photographed Nancy, I probably wouldn't have I probably wouldn't have um, got got noticed by by Storm, uh, who I think it was a matter of matter of weeks after that she came on down to the studio too. Now she'd made the trip from Scotland. Uh, to come wow, in okay. to come and shoot with me which is um so she, she's a, a welsh girl um by by birth um doesn't live a, doesn't live a, a anywhere around these parts anymore um but obviously she's got family down this way so she she kind of you know you kind of did the whole visit in the, the visit in the family weekend uh and came and joined me in studio and again publications just went wild in a, in a uh, i'd never met uh storm up until that point uh but but she's very well acquainted with nancy and uh and, and with emmy as well um so it's it's a it's a very small world very very small world but yeah, they're all friends cool. you know uh to the point where you know even even things like i think storm probably got a, a character reference of myself and what it was like to work with me from from Nancy, more than likely, right. and, and Emmy okay. as well, you know. So yeah, yeah, um, yeah. yeah it, it sometimes it's just you know you, you just got to knock over that first domino, and the, and the rest the rest will fall, you know. You've, you um, mentioned um, you mentioned a couple of times, Chris, when we sort of went through those first images of Rosie, and obviously these ones then of Nancy, you might have you. Mm -hmm. Then that led on to other things, and you said that the publications then went, you know, really interested. Sure. So tell tell us about that then, because obviously the, here we're kind of we're kind of going into the realms of was it marketing or was it just something that you just happened to share? Did you tag them in it, certain publications in it, and then they picked up on it or what? Um, it's it, so 
with with the online publications now the way the way that they are now um you can go on to several different platforms and you can literally submit your images which actually for um, my first few publications maybe seven or eight years ago was was what i was doing you know if i want if i wanted to get my image into a magazine um it would be a um a case of submit a bunch of images and uh yeah the editor might say yeah absolutely yeah lovely but that was always on a a tfp basis as they call it in the industry so time for print um yeah. so you wouldn't you wouldn't as a photographer you wouldn't you wouldn't get get paid for that unfortunately um what i what i later found out is though that when a publication approaches you for your work then the ball is in your court different story so if you're, if it's, yeah, a different, yeah, yeah. it's a different ball game then absolutely but yeah. um you know the i mean the, the images that we've gone through so far the whilst they whilst they were for publication etc uh if the publication isn't paying you then there's no nda there's not there's no non-disclosure agreement essentially so you are free to still use these images on your social medias etc but you are also free to uh republish those images uh onto I suppose any any other platform that you wish so a lot of those images what well, they're, they're almost dual publication images because um mm. we haven't shown the one of zane yet but the the zane image that got published we're gonna come to and that the, we're gonna oh yeah, i won't i won't i won't give it i won't give too much away but <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Um, but yeah listen it, you know if 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 a, if a brand then approaches you or uh you know so somebody from from a from a different just a completely different walk of life there you 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 set your terms as absolutely. it were you know? yeah, absolutely. Um, but it all depends on what you what you're in it for i i guess you know i was, I was never you know I, I was never and probably never have been in it uh for the money as as it were you know all of these things are or organic things that happen um and i and i produce my work with people that i enjoy spending my time with that's the that's the biggest key for me well then yeah. you, you you know you're on a winner there aren't you you know if you great yeah. great people to hang out with you love your photography sure. you put every what more could you ask you, you know what i mean that's, that's what it's all dream, about, isn't it? <laughs> absolutely absolutely yeah. all right well listen i told you it'd be going quick 47 minutes in krish 47 minutes <laughs> bang just like that so now is the time yeah. for you to have a sip of that coffee i thought i thought you had and a bit so, of your mate. water <laughs> So what I'll do is I'm just going to quickly uh, give us ourselves a bit of a break so we can have a quick slurp. So I shall sure. be I'll be straight back. All right, I'll be straight back. Right then, cool. So uh, as usual, you know, time for a bit of lubrication. It's only water. So I'll play, uh, play you a very short video, something relevant to the blog post that I hope you'll check out. That's about a minute. You've seen it before if you're a regular viewer. Uh, and then we'll get Chris in to talk about this other image, this uh, this other image that uh, actually made quite an impact on him. So play this I'm back in about a minute or so. Talk about powerful music for a constant light. Get in there. Right, okay, let's bring him back in again. I've unmuted you, so you should be able to hear me and you should be able to hear you, hopefully. Right, okay. Chris, let's have a talk about this one image here that you mentioned then. This one, I believe, if I got my little buttons correctly here, it should be this image here. Hey, you go. That's the one. That's the one. All That's right, my so guy, Zane. What, yeah. Well, tell us a story behind this one then, mate. 
<laughs> well, um, it, it, so Zane uh, approached. Well, I, I approached Zane actually. So um, the this image and the one of Richard with the the big back piece that that we showed just previously. That one there. That's the point. Um, that was all shot in the same session. So uh, Zane, all right. good good fr good friend of mine, really 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 good guy. Um, Rich as well. Actually, you know, a lot of time for for these guys. And um, I, and I sort of said uh, to Zane. Right, we're going to go for that, um, you know, that that sort of that tailored look. You know, get the jacket on, but I want you to sort of go a little bit, uh, a little bit mafia boss with the uh, with the <laughs> vest underneath. And yeah. uh, and I said, I said to him, look, listen, spark this fag up, and uh, let's go and grab some props. So we went and got this empty bottle of crack and rum, which we which we found uh, in the studio. Don't ask me how it got there. I was going to say, and, yeah, funny how uh, it was empty. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. But in in the glass, though, you'll notice that Kraken is quite a dark rum, um, and I made that mixture up uh, using a, a just a, just a tea bag and, and some water, um, and uh, and we were going to try and get away with the old uh, the old dark and stormy as they as they call it, which happens to be a a, a fan favourite of of mine and the boys, like you know, so. Um, uh, we, we got that going and I sort of said, look, get get the uh, get the fag going, pal, and just just blow blow me some nice smoke clouds. And uh it was all all one shot. It again, it's that top down lighting. Uh right. Zane's got a wonderful complexion about him as well. Uh and I was actually using rather than a reflector, I was just using the bounce off the off the table, which um Right. does affect things as you as you, as you might guess and you've got a nice reflection on there but yeah literally just like bouncing off the table there just to lift the shadows a little bit on yeah. there on, on the chin and under the chin there incidentally you can actually see the um uh the the catch lights if you will uh on the top of the, the kraken bottle but we we took these shots uh they went into a magazine called expressions magazine who absolutely loved it uh and it got rather a lot of um i suppose the right word is clout if you will on uh, yeah, on social yeah. media and the the first that i was aware was that kraken had liked the posts so crack and run the manufacturer they they like the post yeah. fab stuff that's awesome um then they messaged me and they said oh chris i love it but it's a little inaccurate they said uh so i'm i'm conversing now with whoever runs their their marketing they said yeah i, I was i was a dark room uh chris and uh, it's way too light in that in that cup there <laughs> but um i was like <laughs> It was all tongue in cheek. It was all tongue in cheek. Oh, yeah, right, I, right. I took it. I, yeah. I took that one on the on the on the chin, as it were. But um, uh, I went over to their website around about a week later, and it it was the banner shot. Wow! And some sometimes, for all the you can you can chase and chase and chase the publication all you want, and sometimes it's just handed to you on a silver platter. You know, and this this image was was uh, was was absolutely that that scenario Super. so um i'm re i'm and, and i'm I, I was proud of it anyway uh irrespective of, of of what happened with it after you know uh after we'd we'd sort of posted it when i took that image you know when you know and, and as yeah, a studio yeah. photographer you just get that feeling like oh, I've, I've nailed this and everything's just perfect the, the, you know the the shape of the smoke as it as it's leaving his uh you know leaving his mouth and and his pose and it's just it's got that ear of candor to it, you know, um, yeah, and it, yeah. and it just, it just everything just worked perfectly in terms of the post processing on the image as well, um, you know. So applying my let's say my final LUT, if you will, uh, mm -hmm. just baked onto there perfectly, and um, yeah, one of one of my one of my best images. If I if, if, if you know, without so any any disrespect to anybody else that's in the portfolio like you know that's that's one yeah, of my yeah, favorites yeah. Without a doubt, you know, Talk, sure. talking about you mentioned your retouching there then obviously because that is a you know that's very much a part of your style as it is for all of us who do this kind of stuff that you know that that final touch what sure. are you somebody who is um are you a lightroom capture one are you photoshop mm -hmm. what what is your general kind of what does your workflow I've, consist of i guess it, it used to be simpler. Let's let's. I will certainly <laughs> say that. Um, so I, okay. I, I used to, I used to be a um, a Lightroom classic guy, tethered in, yeah. and uh, and then I'd I'd sort of I'd sort of pre bake a look 
onto onto my images. But what what I found was that certainly uh, using the R6 Mark II at the moment um, is that the, there's no Teva protocol, unfortunately, at the moment with Adobe for um, for uh, for Lightroom Classic, um, yeah. chat correct correct me if I'm if I'm wrong. So at this juncture, I actually haven't tried for a while. But Capture One now uh, is my is my go to. Um, mm. You know, t- tether all. I then pop it into into standard Lightroom CC now 2024 uh, mm. and anything and anything major that I want to do uh, will be done in Photoshop. So things like skin softening. Uh, if I'm using any of the hints and tips that I've learned from one wonderful Glenn Dewis, then I, I'll do those all in Photoshop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, it's, it's, it's interesting yeah, it's, you say Capture One, Chris. Sorry, sorry for putting in, mate, because. Mm. Obviously, you're shooting there into a, I presume, either into a desktop or a laptop with Capture One on. And then I, di- I didn't know you were going to say then that you take it then from there into Lightroom. I thought you were going to say that you stick with Capture One because that is, that's pretty much my workflow. I'm, I'm using the Capture One app on my iPad Pro, which just works. I mean, and I haven't tried Lightroom tethering for ages. And I'm guessing, I know it has been worked on, but I just found it. It was just one part of Lightroom that I found I couldn't trust because, you know, you know, like when you get in the groove on a photo shoot and you kind of like, first of all, you take your first few shots, you check everything comes through and then you get into yeah. your flow and you're like, bang, bang and you gotcha. think, oh my yeah. God, that's a killer. That's a killer. Yeah. And when yeah, I did yeah. that, I found that I'd look at the screen and I'd have that spinning wheel of death <laughs> that basically meant... You ain't having it. Yeah. That image isn't coming Forget through, it. mate. You're gonna have to go again. I was <laughs> like, oh man. And it would be that it would have been the best one. So now yeah. I use, like I say, capture one on my iPad Pro. It just works. There's there's just, yeah. you know, you turn your camera on, you plug it in, it works. It's but, seamless. But then I take those images from there into Lightroom and carry on as normal. So absolutely. I feel your yeah. pain when you say it used to be a lot simpler. Again. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's, I mean, listen, it's, it's uh, ultimately it's it's just one it's one more step. And where, whereas yeah, I yeah. used to probably take uh, I don't know what say four say four hundred images uh, in a in a day session, that's now down to somewhere in the region of between let's say eighty five and a, and one hundred and sixty on a bad day. You know, that's right. a, that's so I've whittled I've whittled down actually getting as much right in the camera as I possibly can. Uh, and, and my, obviously my, you know, with that length of time now that I've been working with these models and, and models in general, um, my posing is a little bit more critical now as well, you know, but my, my instructing of, of said model is, is, is a lot more critical. So, um, I'm whilst whilst the workflow is a little bit more long winded. Uh, I'm not dealing with a ridiculous amount of files anyway, no. uh, yeah. and uh, so it, it's one extra step. It's just one extra step, and that, that's the that's the way that I look at it. Uh, and it's working for me. You know, it, it, it's working yeah, yeah. for me. So uh, I, I kind yeah. of yeah, if it ain't ain't broken, don't don't fix Absolutely. it. Absolutely, I'm with you um, completely. With you completely. With you. Yeah. All right. Listen, we've we've almost mm-hmm. been going an hour. So I am conscious yeah. of time, but like I said, I just can't believe Appreciate how quick these go. It's just crazy. Um, oh, hold on. Oh, well, I'm going to bring up this comment here. Lee Churchill, it's just caught my eye. Can't you record to card and tether? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. you can. Yeah. So again, yeah. capture one fantastic feature on the left side, left hand side of your drop down. If you're using it on a computer or a laptop, uh, you can designate uh and if you've got two card slots as well, you can literally pick which card it registers to as well as yeah. your tethering. So, um, and that's yeah, the same very, as well with the uh, with the iPad Pro app as well. It, it's mm-hmm. you know you can either have it where it only stores it on the camera on on the iPad, which obviously we don't want, or it'll store both. It'll store the JPEG on the iPad Pro, and the RAWs will remain on the card. So yeah, best of both worlds, and it just works so so well. <laughs> Um, right, Chris. Obviously, like I say, time is time is just going by really, really quickly. But there's a couple of things I want us to cover. First of all, we'll get, we'll go to some questions and comments in a minute. Yes. But before, so if anybody's got any that wants to shove in right last minute now, just do that. But I asked you uh, on a message on a message before we went live. I know I left it last minute. I'm sorry about that. No, it's all right, mate. But, don't uh, wait, don't wait, don't wait. but I'm I'm intrigued because I did this with uh, with Kevin last week. 
And I want you to sort of, if, if possible, are there three... What, no, actually, no, I've rephrased that. What are the three most valuable lessons that have, you have learned in your time so far in photography and or as a photographer? The three most valuable lessons that you've learned? It's a difficult one. <laughs> the first one is absolutely um, consistency. That's the right. that is the that's the biggest thing. And when I when I say consistency, it's when I started uh, with with lighting and trying to control and shape light myself. There, I and I and I promise you, there were days where the frustration was was real. I just couldn't replicate what was what was in my head, mm -hmm. and it's easy to give up. You know, it's it's easy to give up and sort of say, ah, yeah, it's not for me. I'll I'll, uh, I'll take up golf instead, for example. <laughs> okay, um, that ruins a good walk. That does it. It does. <laughs> it really does. But yeah, I, I I would say that if I hadn't have been consistent, you know, just constantly just putting that light up there, or trying to get the Rembrandt, or trying to get the loop, you know, that that protocol it almost it, and now it's now it's almost like it's driving a car isn't it it's second nature mm. you, can, you can get that in just absolutely no time you yeah, know? yeah um but if i hadn't have stuck with that i'm the type of person that probably would have gotten bored and and, and just given up it's, it's probably one of the first disciplines where i can honestly say i'm with you there uh, consistency I, is I, key I, absolutely I just, I just stuck with it so i, I would say that, that that consistency one thing all right that's your number one uh, then second one do, second thing do, you've learned shoot what makes you happy not what makes you money absolutely yeah is is the is is the way it goes now, it's easy for me to say that you know i've got i've got my nine to five i work at Carmarthen cameras i work within the photographic industry um and and if uh krishna gar photography ceased to exist as of tomorrow morning uh i've got my i've got my my day job to 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 sort yeah. of go go back to um but but Chris, Chris, just putting in that's on, that's yeah, a that's a good position to be in, isn't it? So it is. so often, you know, I you know I, I come across people who are so kind of like I want to do this as a professional, it, and it and it isn't all it's made out to be. The time that you can have with the camera in your hand is minimal. You know, I mean, the rest yeah. of it is running the business. Whereas when you've got a job that you know, when I get up in the morning every day, yeah. I know there's a wage packet coming in. Therefore, I can thoroughly enjoy my photography. And yeah. like you said there, for your second lesson that you've learned is you can fo concentrate on photographing what you love. You can't That's get better key. than that. No, absolutely. Absolutely. And I suppose the, the, the last one, I guess, is... No, oh, it's a difficult one, Glenn. I've given you two solid ones there, to be honest with you. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've given you two solid ones here, pal. Um shoot cannon would that be the third one <laughs> I, I mean, don't go there yeah, don't no go there. no no i was no. gonna say but I, actually i mean you know canon as a canon as a brand now um for me as a a completely separate entity to the Carmarthen cameras and what i do there as a as a day job um have been very very good to me so i i, I would say um you know how, how about that, how about we right, tread carefully point. and say well, Use what for you is fit for purpose. I love that. In fact, I'm going to take. <laughs> I'm going to take that. I'm going to you take can that, yeah, gonna, have that. You can have that on me. You can have that on me. I'm going to have that. One. And there's, there's yeah, one, I'll give you a fourth so one. I'll give you a fourth one. Well, I won't. Our friend Ian Munro will know your yeah. worth. There you go. Oh, Wise man. words. Wise words. I just, I just seen, I just seen in the in the comments there who inspires you. Well, I, I'm on, I'm on a live now with one guy. And that, oh, that dude you. there, Ian Ian Munro, honestly, they were, and a true story, guys. I will, I, I, you know, if we if we're gonna wrap up in a second, I, I'll leave you with the with the sentiment that I was a Glyn Dewis fan and I was an Ian Munro fan before they were my friends. That's that's a hundred percent true. Um, I love those guys. They're they're absolutely amazing. Um, the the feeling, I can speak for Ian, and I'm sure you'll put it in the comments. The feeling is entirely mutual. We are all of us are very lucky. We've got a very good. It's taken me a long time in life to get to the point where I've got the closest possible friends I could ever wish for. Do you know what I mean? People I know, and you're also the same, Ian, Anthony, Brian, 
Steve, you know, Gaz will all say it. Yes. Mm -hmm. That you know, wherever you are, doesn't matter where you are, what time it is, if you need them, they'll be there. And that's the relationship that we all have. And it is it is yeah. priceless. Absolutely priceless. Massively so. Massively cool. so. Yeah. It's all huge. right. Well, listen, let's uh, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna press this button here now because this is normally where we uh, go through questions, but I don't know, I don't even know how many that have come in. We'll just kind of have a look and see what there is there. Um, in fact, one of them's just popped up now. Here you go. Ian, yes, sir. big love. What a bunch. Absolutely. Very, very lucky. We are very, very lucky. Right, let's have a look here then, mate. I'll just quickly... I have starred a few. There was a lot that I... I've actually posted more comments up during the live this time than I have in previous ones. I was really just kind of sure, doing the yeah. old multitasking. Uh, Ian Munro, again, he's put uh, distinctive style, very cool subjects that give your eyes a feast. Absolutely. Um, and there was comments that were coming in all the time, you know, when, when you were putting your images up there. There was lots of wows and gorgeous images. Love the way these are lit. Lee Churchill, when you said about your 50 mil as being one of your go-to go -to lenses, the plastic fantastic he's put there. Every time. Every time, Lee. Absolutely, mate. Yeah, but uh, 50 mil, 1.8. Uh, if one gets trashed on a on a commercial shoot, was it 120 quid to, to, to go and Amazing, replace it? it? It's, um, Amazing. yeah, hell of a bit of glass. Hell of a bit of cool. glass. Uh, David Palermo, now I know you said, and it was very humbling for you to say it, that photographers who inspire you, which was very, very kind. Um, are there any others that outside, <laughs> outside of what you said that you yeah. think I love their stuff, you know. I mean, that that they yeah. look at their work and I think, wow. Yeah. Uh, so I, I give you three, four. Uh, so um, Annie Leibovitz. Oh, yeah, I'm with you. Totally with you. Uh, Anti Leibovitz, as I like to call her. Yeah, she's the <laughs> um, she's num number one, number one inspiration yeah. for that shadow of a doubt. Uh, Benjamin von Wong. Oh right? yeah, yeah. You know yeah. that name. Go and yeah. check that guy out because, um, yeah, he's he's pretty serious business. <laughs> like you know, uh, he's a he's everything. He's an he's a, you know uh, uh, an, e uh, you know, an eco warrior. Uh, mm -hmm. He's an installation artist now. He's he's just one of the most ridiculous photographers I've ever seen in my life. Just because the the scale of of the things that he photographs absolutely out of this world. Um, Kirsty Mitchell sensational yeah, yeah. Um, in fact i've got so like somewhere here um i've got the i've got the one in fact can i can i reach for yeah. that yeah, yeah go for it, that, mate. Go that for all it. right this um oh, my wonderful other half uh purchased this for me i don't know if you've ever seen this this book I guys no. one wonderland by kirsty mitchell uh i would highly 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 recommend getting your hands on this on this book this is wow. one of this just an absolute feast big, of, of fine art yeah as a coffee coffee table book is just phenomenal but um this is one of those scenarios where the art world meets the photography world because um if you <laughs> uh if you look at, at where where all of the all of the props and the dresses and then the actual artwork and thing is displayed You'd be looking. You'd be looking at you know the the Munich National Gallery, Saatchi. You know, we're talking about some serious, serious names. She, you know, I've I've followed her. I've followed her story. I mean, it's it's, it's heartbreaking. You know, the, the the story behind that, real heartbreaking. Um, okay. And uh, she's a she's a, a a very very powerful woman to 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 pulled herself through that and poured, uh, you know, her her sort of her hardship and her tragedy into into. A book of that, okay. of that magn magnitude. I'd be interested to have a look at that then, because I've, like, yeah. a, you know, like we mentioned earlier on, how you know events in your life can ultimately shape your style and impact, you know, what you felt. I'd, I'd be interested to see if that would seem the case with her as well. But yeah. that looks a beast yeah. of a book there. It's a um, monster. It's a monster. Yeah, but yeah, but yeah. And then um, I, I suppose uh, Rich, Richard Tuborg, Die Tuborg, as I like to call him. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> Holland. yeah he's just, uh, he's just a head love like, him. Like, love but, him. Um, fella. i love that guy fella. brilliant brilliant all right we've well, got ian monroe saying you're talking about marvel heroes there you go chris is my marvel hero uh compton harry Obviously. he's put chris what a great guy met him at the photography show last month compton I, I remember our interaction mate thank you so much for joining in Paul, and thank you for your kind words as well appreciate cool. that our friend Kirsty, she's put sitting quietly because I'm speechless. Love these images. I mean, Kirstie. you couldn't ask for more than that. Wonderful. That Brilliant. Stuff. Thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you. 
Uh, Anthony has put, you can also tether to Lightroom Classic and Camera and Card 2 on a Canon at least. Okay. Um, also said wise words. Uh, and a lovely comment here, just a general comment about our gang. He's put, Lee Churchill, the fact that you all come across as friendly, people draws us in all in, makes us all feel part of it. How nice is that? I love that. I cool. Love that. All right. Well, Chris, we're with 10 past nine, 10 past eight. <laughs> Holy moly. Yeah, there we've is, done all right. Is, yeah, we have done all right. I mean, I, do you know what? There is more that I would want to ask you, but I'd like to kind of uh, under promise, over deliver. We'll have to just get you back on. You know, I'll, I'd love to see some more maybe of images that you're doing, like that one of your friends. Was it Zane, the guy with the, the crack yeah. and stuff there? I'd love to see sure. more stuff like that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Because I know that there's a lot of stuff that you're kind of up to at the moment. Because I know that we're you doing like a tour. Because I know there's been workshops that you've been doing and stuff like yeah, that as well. So hopefully now uh, come the summer. Um, so with with Carmarthen, um, and this is where the Canon relationship comes in. So this is the first year um, that I am sort of um, unofficially, officially working with with Canon, uh, not as an ambassador, um, yeah. but somebody that is delivering uh, with their RF system. Um, a series of workshops. So I've done my beginner and my uh, my sort of my intermediate workshop so far. Third uh, of May is when I'll be doing a masterclass um, on studio and, and portraiture using the RF system. And uh, and then after said date, we'll see how the calendar looks. But I'll be I'll be off on my tour. So I'm hopefully going to be doing uh, London, Birmingham, and Leeds once more. Cool. So uh, so where then would people find, uh, or where would you want people to go to see your your stuff, follow what you're doing, and also keep up to date with all these kind of dates for workshops that are looking to be coming ahead. Well, right now, social media is, a, is the best place to catch me just because the website, which is uh, krishphotovideo.co.uk, uh, that currently is, uh, is under reconstruction at the moment. Um, but otherwise, it's at Krish Degar Photography, and you can find me on all social media, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. He's everywhere. Go. Krish <laughs> is everywhere, and we love it. <laughs> well, Krish, mate, I... If, you know, I could chat to you as, as we often do. I could chat for you for ages. Do you know what I mean? But uh, sure. I've thoroughly enjoyed this. And I, I love the fact that as a friend, I've got to know more about you, albeit publicly, I've got to find sure. out more about you. Um, yeah. So, yeah. you know, and, and clearly from everybody else in the chat, everyone's enjoyed it. It's, it's, I, know, I knew they would. I knew they would. Always get the cool kids yeah. on. We'll definitely yeah they're, 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 a, they're a lovely bunch you've you built a hell of a community here glenn to be honest with you all props to you as well mate for no, these, so are great. these are great these are great i'm loving doing it so anyway chris from me don't disappear go into the virtual green room oh, i hate it when people sure. do that and i just did it myself uh go into the virtual <laughs> virtual green room and i'll see you there in a moment but from us thank you so much really really enjoyed it buddy thank you, you, you nailed it <laughs> thank you mate cheers all right, guys mate. Catch you in a mo. Oh, I knew it'd be good. Our friend Chris, what a lovely guy. Lovely, lovely guy. And what I love, like I said right at the start, more than anything about Chris is the fact that he's found his thing and he's not doing it to please anybody else. Or he's doing it to please himself. He's doing what he said. I think it was his second thing that he'd learned. Do what makes you happy. Do what you love. And that's what he's doing. So thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy it. Great work. And just... Yeah, cracking. Really, really good stuff. So that's the end of this uh, this particular uh, live. I was trying to finish off with a couple of things, let you know about the next guest we've got on as well. But just as a reminder, before I tell you who the next guest is, don't forget to register for your free pass for the Lightroom Virtual Summit, which is obviously returned in 2024. Go to this link, just register. I know that I think it says at the bottom there that you'll then get part of their newsletter group. Unsubscribe, it doesn't matter. Just get the free pass, and if you use it, then fantastic. There's 45 classes, 15 instructors, 30-plus hours, and you can watch each class once it goes live during that week. You can watch it for up to 48 hours. So there you go. Loads and loads of Lightroom stuff. So there's that. Don't forget as well the blog post that I've done, that in-depth blog post with that extra video that I put together showing you this kind of weirdness going on here with my friend Steve. What am I doing? All is revealed in that blog post. All is revealed. But the last thing to let you know about then is the, the guest. Now, I'm not going to say next week's guest because there isn't, a, there isn't a live next week or the week after. I'm not back until the 5th 
the 5th of May. And I know that's disappointing. I know that's disappointing. But we do have a guest on the 5th of May. All right. And that guest, hopefully you could hear the sound effects then. That guest is my oh, dear friend, wonderful, wonderful person, Lisa Carney. Now, if you've not heard of Lisa Carney, I don't know where you've been, but Lisa is just, she is a tour de force when it comes to photography and especially when it comes to retouching because Lisa is, uh, by profession, she is one of the um, retouchers of work that you will have definitely seen. She's worked on movies that you would have definitely seen. She is like a high end. She is one of the Hollywood retouchers for all the movie posters and movie artwork for all the films that kind of come out. She has just got one hell of a portfolio of work. Everybody I know that knows Lisa, they always say the same thing. I love Lisa. She is just one of life's just wonderful people. But aside from the work that she does there, she's also an incredible photographer. So rather than us talking about the obvious, which would be the Hollywood work, and we'll probably touch on it, I'm sure we will, we're going to look at some of her photography work and some in, some in particular, some projects that she's worked on, which having seen the images that she's already sent over to me, it's pff, unbelievable, absolutely unbelievable stuff. I'm not going to tell you what she's done or how she's done it, but I guarantee you'll be blown away and you will love her. You really will. By the end of it, you'll be going, I love Lisa. I really do love her. So she's, she's just a wonderful person. So I'm looking forward to that. But that's the 5th of May. In between now and the 5th of May, I may well be doing a live, but not on a Sunday, and it won't be with a it won't be like this kind of format. I'm thinking of doing one uh on about tech for photographers because there's some photo some kit that I'm getting, which I have to get, and I want to kind of explain it, but also we'll spend that time talking about other kit that's out there that could be useful that you might want to know about as well. So I might do that. So just keep an eye on social media, keep an eye on the newsletter. But that's that's all the admin. Just don't forget. Get your pass for the virtual summit. You'd be daft not to because it is completely free while you get it. But that's it. My thanks go again to our great friend, Chris. I'm going to catch up with him in the green room in a minute. Thank you to you as well from all over the place, which has been brilliant. Thank you for joining me. And thank you for making that chat room just so busy. It's just wonderful to see. And thanks for the folks who come back on a regular basis. Believe me, it is very much appreciated. <laughs> But there you go. That's it. I shall now go and uh, have some couple of eggs and a few egg whites. Ian Munro, diet's going well. Uh, and I shall catch you on the 5th of May, if not before, on social media. All right? Love you and leave you. Thanks very much, folks. <laughs>